Hi, it's Friday, the 20th of October, 2017. I am Cody with Wall Street Breakdown, and we've got what is gonna end up being probably a fairly quick earnings call, earnings recap from today. We've got earnings from Honeywell, Procter & Gamble, and General Electric. So if you wanna go to just one specific earning, look in the description, and it'll show you the start time down there. We'll get started with Honeywell, earnings per share of $1.75, that was flat. But those EPS were up 16% year over year, so that is significant EPS growth. Revenues of $10.12 billion was up $110 million from what the street was estimating, and that revenue number is up 3.3% year over year. So Honeywell doing some substantial growth for a company that's been around such a long period of time. Honeywell doing this kind of growth has got to be excellent for a lot of its investors to see. Organic growth at Honeywell grew 5% in the quarter, that's a year over year number, and $120 million is being allocated to new projects at Honeywell, trying to branch them off into even more stuff than they already do, which they're a very, very large company that covers a whole lot of ground. So Honeywell had a fairly, fairly decent earnings call beating on, or beating on revs. Um, in line on EPS, but up 16% year over year. Those kind of numbers and organic growth at 5% for a company like Honeywell to have just organic growth at 5% when they are so already spread out as much as they possibly can be shows that they must be making some products that are doing better than a lot of their competitors' products where people at the shelf are physically choosing Honeywell over a competitor's product. Good job on Honeywell's part. Procter & Gamble EPS of a dollar nine beat the street by one cent. Revenues of sixteen point six five billion came up a little short by fifty million dollars, but that's still up year over year 08 percent. So there is a, a modicum amount of revenue growth, but nothing to write home about, unless, of course, you just haven't had a chance to write home recently, in which case I suggest you get yourself a nice little fountain pen and maybe write something to home. If not, maybe write something in your diary. I seem to do that quite frequently, but Procter & Gamble, 0.8% revenue growth year over year, not anything to write home about in the... Uh, context I'm saying it in. Organic sales revenue increased 1%, volume also increased 1%, and pricing and mix were both flat. So while Procter & Gamble is still a very strong company, it's not an earnings call that's going to blow anyone away. It seems like it's pretty much par for the course, and that's what you like to see out of these stalwarts is just they keep carrying on, they pay their dividends, there doesn't seem to ever be any kind of hiccups, their revenue growth is still there even though it's you know, it's very, very small. It is there, and it's not going anywhere, and Procter & Gamble aren't doing anything to upset the apple cart at all. So if you're already in Procter & Gamble, especially if you got it at a pretty good price, pretty stable company to own, very much like Honeywell, a company that we just covered. Moving into a company that is not so stable, but did have the most interesting earnings call of the day, is General Electric. General Electric earnings per share of 29 cents missed the street by 20 cents. They were estimating 49 cents a share. Their EPS is also down 9% year over year. Revenues of 33.47 billion, huge company General Electric, beat the street by 910 million. But wait, wait, hold up. Revenues, though, at General Electric, up 14.3% year-over-year. Now, General Electric, very large company, as you can tell by that revenue number, but they are spread out through so many different segments that it, this is a lot like a, some other companies that we've covered where I just say, like, hey, it is impossible to physically break this down unless you are an expert on General Electric. What we'll do is we'll get into a couple of the segments. We'll give you some of the most important numbers. And if you're thinking about doing any type of investing, especially Honeywell or General Electric, these are very, very broad companies that need research done. I suggest you do it. I suggest you speak to your licensed professional financial advisor before making any kind of decisions, please, due diligence. You work very hard for your money. Let's keep your money in your pocket or your bank account where you want it, right? So General Electric, while they uh, they beat on revs, they missed on EPS substantially. They've got a backlog of $328 billion. Pretty big backlog of business. That's up 3%. Orders are up 11%. They paid out so far this year $4 billion in dividends with another $4 billion on the way. They pay $8 billion a year in dividends. 
and uh, a cash flow of $7 billion from operating activities. $7 billion in operating activities was their cash flow. The projection, I'm pretty sure, at the beginning of the year for this year was supposed to be for $14 billion, 12 to $14 billion, $7 billion. That is significant for the operating cash flow. That is just not, uh, that is not acceptable. Um, there were analysts that came out this afternoon after this came out this morning and said uh, General Electric should pull the dividend. They should at least, they should at least lower the dividend significantly, but there's people talking about pull the dividend entirely. Like you just, sometimes you got to burn the boats to take the island and that's the only way you can do it and the way that this needs to be done and a lot of analysts think this and I'm, I'm, I'm close to agreeing is that shareholders won't be happy. It will tank the stock. It will destroy the General Electric ambient. Um, if they have any joie de vivre in the marketplace left, which I'm not even sure they do, they'll just upset everyone. People will abandon it. It will drop significantly. But opening up $8 billion a year in cash flow to be able to do everything else including their pensions which is much more important i think pensions make sure you got your in-house structure settled long before you deal with you know paying the shareholders and on top of that they are still in the process of needing to make a lot of capital investments they need this money significantly so when analysts came out and it's trust me I would imagine shareholders of General Electric this afternoon are probably up in arms hearing people suggesting to actually cut the dividend, whether it's cut it significantly or cut it entirely. That's got to have a lot of people shook up. But the fact of the matter is, is if General Electric is going to right this ship, and the only way they might be able to do it is take all that revenue they make, take that money that they've got, take what they've got. They've got it. They're huge. They, they generate cash like you wouldn't believe. They just don't generate enough earnings. But if they can take some of that money and they can allocate that money to where they need to so they can prop some stuff up, if they think they've got the right plan, burn the boats. Tell them dividends gone or dividends cut. It is what it is. I know that's the, that is the sign people say is the big one, right? If you're going to invest in a company, what is the sign? One of the major, major signs a good advisor will tell you is take a look at the dividend of a company. Has the dividend increased every time? Has it at least stayed stable? Have they ever cut a dividend or missed a dividend payment? In how long, how many years, how many quarters, whatever it is, people wanna know. Dividends are huge, because it shows companies being able to have a projection and not have to make a lot of corrections on the path. General Electric is at that point where there's a correction that needs to be made. This company is long past major correction. Major correction now for CEO with John Flannery, is that his name? There's what, no planes at General Electric anymore? They took all the planes away. They're, these guys are, they're trying to figure this out. You know what? Do what you got to do. Upset the shareholders. If I was a shareholder of General Electric, I'd understand. I mean, I wouldn't understand you cutting the dividend. I wouldn't understand watching my money fall. I'd probably get out of it. And then I'd decide where I thought it was at a bottom. If you guys had the right plan, I'd just buy it again. But that's that's advice. I'm not giving you advice. Licensed professional financial advisor. Not a guy wearing glasses in a basement on YouTube on a Friday night. But if you were an investor in General Electric, I can understand where your trepidation is this evening. But you have to understand these companies, companies this size, they have to find a way to figure it out. General Electric has been around since the stock market's been around. It is time for General Electric to figure out this company and get it righted and get it righted now. The CEO wants to do it. You can tell that this guy took this job willing to lose friends to figure it out. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't want to be your friend. I want to be the guy that you make money for or I make money for you. That's what it's about. We'll be friends if we get results. So if he needs to go and do this for a year or two and General Electric takes a smashing, but they prove that with that extra money that they're able to figure out what they're trying to do and able to execute on it, people will forgive and forget very shortly when you bring them results. General Electric, the ball's in your court. There's no other way to figure it out but to actually go out there and unfortunately make some hard decisions to right the ship. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. 
Thumbs up for this video. Thumbs up for all the videos. Let us know what you think about the earnings today. Honeywell with really good earnings. Procter & Gamble, eh, it's so-so. And General Electric, there's a lot of controversy. We love hearing from you, so let us know what you think. Make sure you have a nice, fun, healthy, safe weekend. Seatbelts, no drunk driving. You know the rules, people. You work hard during the week. Let's make sure you have a fun and safe weekend. Thanks for stopping by.